for coming back and helping me to go through the 10 most common sport related injuries with you. Today we're going to go with low back. This is a very big point of tightness for a lot of people. And it's not only just forward bending, back bending, there's rotational issues too. So if you're a pitcher, if you're a hitter, if you are making spectacular plays on the soccer field, or a tennis player, or even a golfer, you're going to need some rotation in the spine, you're going to have to have a nice soft flex to flexible back to absorb some shock on the field, or just to get some power and torque. Okay, so I'm going to give you some tools today to help you open up that back. What we're going to do first in order to warm up the spine a little bit and get the breath going is just sitting easy cross leg. Like I've told you before, sometimes sitting easy cross leg isn't so easy. And if you feel like you are like this in easy cross leg, then it's a good opportunity for you to sit on a block or two or three, and that's going to make it a lot easier for you to open the groin and sit up nice and tall. You do always want to be on the sits bones, not behind them. This is just creating more tension in your spine, your abdominals. Okay, so you're going to come here. You're going to take a nice deep breath in. You're going to bring the arms down, and you're going to start twisting. Your arms are in a 90 degree angle. Your elbows are as high as your shoulder. Fingers extended to the sky. If you could do it with your eyes closed, great. If you get too dizzy, no problem. Just keep them open, spot ahead. Go as deep as you can. What you want to do is look behind you with each twist. Again, unless you get too dizzy. And we're doing this warm up for two minutes. Notice which time, which side you go easier to, which side is tighter, and work with that. See if you can work into it a little bit deeper on that tight side. You're using your breath, syncing it with the movement, so it's in and out through your nose like this. And after your two minutes, deep breath in, interlace your fingers, press your palms up to the sky, and then exhale, hands into heart center. So a lot of um, low back problems, like I said, are rotational or abdominal weakness or lack of flexion extension. That's what we're going to work on. First thing we're going to do is seated forward bend. You're going to come onto your mats. What I like to do with seated forward bend is have myself up on a block. You could sit up on a block. You could sit up on a couple of pillows. You could roll up your mat. You could sit on a sandbag. Just so that your hips are higher than your heels. It gives you this feeling of stretching downhill so there's less effort being pulled into stretching those hamstrings out a little bit. Um, why are we stretching the hamstrings when we're talking about the back? Is that the hamstrings originate right in the sits bones, right in the bones that you're sitting in when you're grinding into the chair. There's, they attach right there. So you can imagine if they're very tight, if your hamstrings are very short and tight, they would pull down on the sits bones, on the pelvis, and change the rotation, the tilt, sorry, of the pelvis. And what that does is, you can see if I exaggerate it, changes the whole structure of your body, overstretches the back, weakens the abdominals. So it's important that we start by opening up the hamstrings first so you can get back into a neutral pelvis. All right, so like I said, hips higher than your heels. I want you to make your feet about hips width apart, toes straight up to the sky, and your feet are square as though they were leaning up against a wall. So they don't look like that, which is very, very common, and it might even happen while you're in the pose. They don't look like that. Nice and square. You're going to reach down, and you're going to grab the outside of your foot, even if you have to be here, because I want your chest and belly attached to your thighs. Okay? And then you're going to walk it out, walk it out, walk it out the best you can with your chest and belly attached to your thighs. Keep an eye on your feet, they don't roll in, and you're going to relax your head down. If you have another block, it's nice to put the block here and actually rest your head on that so you can release any tension in the neck. So you're going to stay here with some nice deep breaths until you feel like you can go a little bit deeper. And you're going to sink in, you'll walk your feet out more and more, more and more and more and more. Okay, I want you to imagine that your forehead will be touching your mid-shin one day. This is what I see a lot of when people are stretching their hamstrings. 
I don't even feel it back here. All I do is feel it in the back of my, in my back. When you're doing a hamstring stretch, the movement comes from here. You hinge like a hinge joint from your hip, not from your back. Okay, so you're leaning almost like your chest, your heart will hit this block before your forehead is ever even near it. And then you'll feel it. And it's okay to have a bent knee. You'll still feel it. And you're holding this one for four to six minutes. You could even hold it longer if you have the stamina to do so. But the longer you hold and sink in and breathe, the more you're gonna open those hamstrings up in time. Another amazing thing to do while you're there is have your sandbag on your back and it gives you a little bit of weight into the pose and you could really relax into it that way. We love working with sandbags, so you could try that as well. You could even make one or get a five pound bag of rice, stick it in a pillowcase, and put it on your back. But be careful when you swing it around, put it on your back, okay? So the next one is wall leans, like we did in another segment. You're gonna come up, opening up those hamstrings again, this time against the wall. Feet are approximately the distance of one of the length of one of your foot away from the wall. So maybe six, seven, eight, nine, ten inches away from the wall. Feet are parallel, hips width apart, track the knees right over your toes, bring your chest around, rest it on your thighs, hold your ground, lean your head up against the wall. Some of you are only going to be here, that's fine. You'll sink in eventually until you're all the way up against your back mid-back, hold here. If you can, start lifting the sits bones up to the sky and feeling that opening really deep into the hamstring. Bend and release out of it. Hold that one two or three minutes if you can. That one takes a lot of commitment to hold because it is so true to the hamstrings that it's not a happy place to be initially. So now we're going to come back to seat and work a little rotation in the spine. You're going to come Let's bring the left heel by your right hip, right foot up and over, okay? Easy enough for some, not so easy for others, but has to be on the ground. Your right hip cannot be off the ground. If you do, and then you go to twist, you're creating more of a tension-filled back, especially on the right, so you want your butt very grounded before there's any rotation. Your back as long as it can be before there's any additional rotation. So if you can't do this, sit on a block. If you still can't do it, sitting on a block, can't get the foot over, put the foot on the inside of the knee. No big deal, you're still gonna get the rotation, and in time, you'll be able to get rid of the block and put the foot right over that knee. You wanna keep this foot flat. Again, hips are grounded. Sit up nice and tall. Right arm's gonna go behind your back. That's gonna help propel your spine up. Thinking very lifted. Left arm goes up to the sky, get some length, and then drop that arm on the outside of the leg and use that arm against the knee, use the backhand against the floor to increase your twist and rotation. And guess what? Head is part of your spine, so Rotate that chin right over the right shoulder. Hold it here. Every inhale, get taller. Every exhale, twist deeper. And think about opening the front of the shoulder and chest. Come out nice and easy, and maybe a little counter twist will help it feel good. And then, of course, you're going to do the other side. Okay? Twist to the other side. Next thing we're gonna do is work the abs a little bit. You're gonna come onto your, into a seated position. You're gonna lean back. This is called boat pose, okay? So what you're gonna do is round the very bottom of your tailbone and you're gonna lean back. This is level one. Lower legs parallel to the floor. Hands are holding the knees. Hold it here, bring it in and out several times. Level two, arms are parallel to the floor as well. Level three, toes in line with your eyes. Hold here first for a count of five. You're squeezing your legs together like you have one nice long leg, and you're gonna bring the knees in. You could do this 10 
to 50 times. Okay, we're rounding the lowest part of our back, our spine, so we don't grind the tailbone into the floor. Keep the knees together, and if you don't trust yourself, roll up socks, get a soft block, put it between your knees and hold it there. And that's gonna help back stability, strengthen the abs. Let it go, take a few deep breaths. Last thing we're gonna do. Have you had enough yet? Onto your hands and knees, forearm plank hold. Okay, so we're toning the whole back, working the shoulders, chest, shoulder joint as well, but we're increasing the strength in our abdominals so we can support that low back. Onto your forearms. What you're gonna do is make sure the elbows are right under your shoulder this time. How do you do that? You can swing the hands around, wrap your fingers around your elbows, then keep your elbows right where they are and just swing the forearms out, palms flat. Palms flat, fingers spread. For a lot of you, you're not gonna be able to get the forearms parallel because the shoulders are too tight. Eventually, work them out until they're parallel. Okay, some of you, it's hard to keep them there. So you can put the block on the floor like that to help you stabilize, okay? And then you're gonna press back into a plank hold. I am not here, I am not here. I am not here or all the way back. My shoulders are over my elbows, palms are flat, legs are engaged, stomach is strong. Don't drop your head either. Your head is a natural extension of your spine and you're gonna hold this for a minute. Take a deep breath, drop your heels to the right, left arm up to the sky, bring it back down, heels to the left, right arm up to the sky, bring it back down and rest on your stomach. And do that three to 10 times for a minute hold, okay? So that's a tough one that you're gonna build up to. That one's an all-encompassing one, back, abdominal, shoulders, chest, and you're getting a little rotation at the end. All right, so that's low back. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to check out all the other videos we have addressing the 10 most common sport-related injuries. Good luck to you, and I'll see you on the field.